Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? Uh, Bob and I are both skiing on the 2022 Fisher Curve GT right now. Um, we're pretty deep in spring skiing at this point, but we got a day that was a little bit firmer, so we thought it was a good time to come out and test these. Bob, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, definitely a good day. Uh, you know, and these really follow in that spirit of that wider race ski with that nice burly construction, you know, Deacon 76. Yeah, Rosmo, Firebird HR, or yep. yeah, HRC. HRC, Spitfire 76. So there's yeah. a lot of skis in this category. Um, and these are right up there with them. You know, there's not like a huge difference between a lot of these skis. Um, right. You know, but these, I would say, are on the quieter side of the ones I've been on. Very smooth. Even when yeah. you throw them sideways, they're not like too jarring yeah. or, or chattery. Um, yeah, super fun. Yeah, we've talked about that in our front side comparisons quite a bit. You know, when you get into skis in this category, the differences between them are, are more subtle. Yeah. You know, more more just minor little little things that you'll pick up on, but overall, like what they accomplish is very similar. Yeah, which is, I mean, just fantastically round, nice, smooth carved turns. Yeah, definitely. You know, I wish I had more of a racing background to harness a little more of the ski's energy, but... A little firmer snow, too, would be nice. We've got kind of some sugary granular snow, so kind of a limit to how much you can push today. Um, but yeah, still really fun. So we'll keep skiing, um, and then we'll meet you back in the studio, we'll talk more about how they build these things, what the intended feel is, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, we'll talk to you then. Uh, as promised in that intro, here we are back in the studio. I didn't say anything in the intro about it being two months later. Right. Well, sometimes it takes a while to get these things worked out. Here we are two <laughs> months later. Um, we had actually planned on releasing the review of these skis way back on like April 1st. Our rep had to come grab the pairs that we had for a demo at I think Sugarloaf in Maine. And then we never got them back until just recently. <laughs> um, so kind of a delayed release on this, this review, but super fun skis and I'm glad that we finally get the chance to talk about them. Um, this is the Fisher Fisher RC4 The Curve GT, yep. which is a bit of a mouthful. Uh, one of the longer, more more technical ski names that I can remember. Um, and, you know, it's kind of, the way that I'm thinking about this ski is it's it's kind of in between skis like the RC1 and skis like they're just full-on race skis. Right. Um, basically, how Fisher describes this is it's a race ski for every day which I think is a really good way to think about it. Yeah, and when you're on it, that's kind of what it feels like. Totally. Yeah. Um, pretty cool design and construction to this ski. So let's run through some different design or different construction elements to start. Um, wood core, you know, nothing crazy about the wood core. There's two applications of carbon in this ski. So we get carbon bridge, um, which is essentially like, they describe it as 90 degree kind of strips of carbon right underfoot, so giving it a, a stronger feel right underfoot. Um, and then we also get Diago carbon, which is something that we've seen in, in other skis, and I'm pretty sure even from other brands too, where it's kind of like a cross-hatching diagonal yeah. grid of carbon throughout the ski to give it a little bit more torsional stiffness. Um, and then we get a sheet of shaped tightenal which is pretty interesting. It's almost a full sheet of Titanol, um, full width in the tip, and then they kind of just barely take it away from the edges, and then you get it back full width underfoot, and it actually coordinates pretty much exactly to where that carbon bridge starts, yeah. which is pretty cool. Um, and then that's about it for construction. Uh, shape. We get some cool stuff with shape too. So pretty much a full camber ski. There's not really any rocker in it. There's a little bit of curve up in the tail, but not really any rocker in it. Um, but we get radical triple radius. Yep. And it was funny for us to decide whether radical was a marketing term, just saying how cool it was, or if there was some type of physical property associated with the word. And we didn't quite get a get an answer, but. 
Um, you know, we kind of we've seen this with Vocal with their three D radius yeah, side playing around with different radius and different yep. portions of the ski. Yeah, and so Fisher's version of that is a little bit different. Um, they're more tight in the shovel of the ski and uh, kind of medium underfoot, and then I've described it as medium er in the tail. Back to a little tighter in the tail. Right, a little tighter in the tail, and you know we kind of get in fights about this from time to time as to what type of property that ends up producing. Um, but in general, this one is really initiate, easy to initiate the turn yeah. and then just a full on, you know, it just feels more responsive underfoot and then through the tail. Um, but it makes that getting into the turn easier. And also I think that lends to kind of the, the greater versatility of this ski. Uh, it is 76 millimeters underfoot, so it is on that wider end of a front side ski. Um, and so by giving it that little bit of an extra ease of use in the shovel, um, it definitely opens up, you know, some additional terrain and snow conditions. Yeah. Um, you know, you do, it's not like terribly intuitive as I've, I've found none of these triple radius, 3D radius to be like, like, oh, I got it first run, first turn. You know, it's usually taken me a few a few runs to figure it out. And, you know, our we have a video of you kind of stuffing the tip on this ski, and part of it was snow conditions, but, um, you know, it just makes it that much easier. You do have to kind of take it, I would say, back to mid, mid forebody um, to really get this thing to initiate like a more of a GS, like a race style turn. Um, but it does it does make sense and it does also uh, combine well with the construction. Yeah. With that, like you were saying, with the shaped tie, having just above the edges, um, in that forebody with the with the um, you know the, that quicker turn radius is a little bit more forgiving. So yeah, uh, makes it more approachable for more. Skiers. I believe I said a, a sheet as in a singular sheet, but I do I, I'm. Quite sure, quite certain. There's two sheets of metal in yeah. the ski. Yeah, that top just, one. Just to is, clarify, the top one is the shaped one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that triple radius uh, does make a difference. Absolutely, um, and I think it's really cool the way that they designed this ski. And like you said, it all all the technology like works really well together yeah. um, to the point where it like it kind of feels like it almost has two different personalities. But I don't even, I don't think that's like an accurate way to describe it. It just works well for a variety of different skiers and skiing styles. Yeah. So at the beginning of this video, the like intro to the intro to the intro was our good friend Ryan Daniel just ripping some turns on it. Um, he's a very strong skier, really good race background. He like wins our local ski bum race all the time. Very very strong skier, and <clears throat> somebody like him, you know, they're. They're putting a ton of skier input into it. They're mm -hmm. really getting the ski to flex and benefiting from that, like, the strength of just this midsection of the yeah. ski. And, you know, Ryan's probably, you can tell in that footage, he's playing around with turn shapes, too. And you can see that when he, he really gives it a ton of power, it's actually, like, lengthening the turns a little bit. Yeah. And when he wanted it to, to finesse it into shorter turns, he kind of backed off a little bit which is really cool because you can take a less aggressive skier, even somebody in like the intermediate ability level, yeah. and they're going to benefit from that same thing that was allowing Ryan to make those quick turns. Is you, get, yeah, you get really easy initiation. You know, the, the, the fact that they took the metal kind of away from the edges right here, it's yeah. giving it a little bit more forgiveness, just a more supple feel, more compliance for a less aggressive yeah. skier. But then you can, you know, put it on the feet of somebody like Ryan Daniel, um, and, and it performs really well. And I kind of felt the same about the varying snow conditions that we skied it in. Like you mentioned that when I stuffed a tip, um, and I think we both were kind of struggling on that day, and it was a weird day. Yeah. Um, I'll just, we'll throw a little clip in right now so you can see what I mean by it was a weird day.
scared snow. Yeah. I noticed that like this would this would dig in pretty quick. Yeah, and it's like then there's sometimes there's not nothing to push against. Yeah. You'll feel it on the bottom too, lower north slope. You punch. Yeah, should we do one more on these? You could get the ski to work in those snow conditions. You know, we had that like it literally was like a couple inches deep of granular sugar snow. So you would like usually when you have sugary snow conditions like that you're knifing through it on a carving ski like this but then there's something else underneath that you like there's an ice layer underneath or something where you can catch and like push against it yeah. but that day there wasn't really anything to push against and i feel like the ski actually did it better than a lot of skis in this category would have because of the shape of the tips and tails you know you didn't have to like just push and push and yeah. push to initiate a turn, you kind of just tip it on edge and finesse it, and this tip pulls you right into the turn. Yeah, and I'm more comfortable on a ski like this just rolling, you know, yeah. like edge to edge, and, you know, it was certainly one of the more stable out of this grouping of skis, you know, whereas a skier like Ryan is getting a lot of energy and power from, you know, midfoot back through the tail, you can see him really right. just like using that tail to spring into the next turn and you know I don't quite have that racing background or that energy out of the back of my turn to do that um, but I found that for me and other skiers that are you know not don't quite have that alpine racing background that are more than happy just to roll this thing edge to edge yep. and go fast and stable and have a great time yep. you know there's, just, there's nothing wrong with it from that standpoint either no um, yeah really really good ski uh, 76 underfoot, so I think we mentioned this at the beginning, a little wider than a lot of skis yep. in the front side category, so it'll work a little better later in the day. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that footage again at the beginning of this video where Ryan was skiing some softer snow conditions, it works in that really well. Um, I've been thinking about this ski a lot over the past few days, uh, kind of just, you know, prep, prepping for this review. I think you're going to see a ton of ski instructors on these. Yep. It just feels, it feels like the perfect ski instructor ski because you can demonstrate so many different things on it. Right. Like the tail's not 100% locked into the turn. There's some forgiveness to it. And then you can make like really short, agile, quick turns if you're kind of just focusing on the tips and tails. And then you can make like really aggressive turns if you want to flex it more and, and engage that kind of mid-body of the ski. Yeah. So... Great addition to the Fisher line. Yep. Um, anything else you want to add, Bob? Just a nice looking ski overall. We were just kind of commenting yeah. on just the, the you know, aesthetic aspect of it. And sharp looking ski, you know, this 13 bin. Yeah, integrated, um, pretty nice. Integrated, integrated binding, binding system. Fisher head Tyrolia yep. system. And it's got some rubber under, under there for a little bit of damping, so. Yeah, this um, binding system in general has actually been around for a long time yeah. now, um, but it's, it works really well. Yeah. You, know, you do see it on a lot of skis, like um, head super shapes, very similar binding systems on those, but it works really well. Um, and yeah, I think it's, it's a very good looking, good looking ski, very bright. Yeah. <laughs> people, people will know that you're out there. Matched my yellow coat very well with the bindings. That's true, it did. Um, so yeah, that's the Fisher Curve GT. We'll definitely have it in the front side comparison when we get later in the summer into the fall. Um, was in our ski test. We had a number of people on it in our ski test. So you will see more information on this down the road. Uh, but in the meantime, don't hesitate to leave a comment as usual and, and let us know if you have any questions. Uh, we we kind of throw out some names of, of skis that it felt similar to in yeah. that intro, like you know Spitfire 76. Firebird HRC, yep. you know, they're all right there in the same category, same waist width, but there are some, some subtle differences between all those skis, in my opinion. Yeah, it's kind of wider race ski type of thing. Yeah, and I'm glad that that, that category is getting more attention. I think we talk about this a lot, but, mm -hmm. like, I don't generally like skiing on something that's, like, 68 yeah. or 70 underfoot. Like, it's just not enough. Um it's like being on a hockey skate. I end there. up booting out a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't <laughs> like doing that. Um, so just bumping up to 76 for me, for me, it, it gives me a little bit more confidence and yeah. 
Just nicer platform to stand on. Yeah, exactly. And a touch more versatility, too, which I always like. So that's Curve GT. Uh, thanks for joining us, as always, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.